All right, uh, thank you guys. Hopefully that was a decent little meal. You know, we're gonna go ahead and get it moving here. Gonna call Kyron back up to the podium to introduce, um, I'm not gonna even start trying to list the different things that she is to me. Uh, whether it's, well, maybe so, because maybe she doesn't know it though. Um, big sister, um, um, sort of, she doesn't know that. No, no, I'm not introducing. I'm just telling her what she is to me. You're going to introduce her. Okay. All right. I, I won't steal any thunder. You say I'm stealing the thunder. Okay, okay, okay. But he's going to introduce a, a friend of mine, a, a big sister of mine, and, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I'm like a secret admirer of hers that maybe she didn't know un until now. But um, so anyway, uh, so Kyron, come on up and get, get your thunder on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce our keynote speaker for the evening, um, which is Miss Teresa Weatherall Neal, someone who is very special to me. Um, I served on her superintendent's advisory council, and in doing so, uh, she helped open a lot of doors for me and um, helped me be able to voice my um, opinion about things that's going on in GRPS, which is Grand Rapids Public Schools. Um, you know, it, she's great. Okay, but um, uh, Ms. let me share a little bit about her. Miss um, Neal is a 38-year GRPS veteran and a Creston High School graduate who has extensive experience within the district and community. Um, prior to being selected as superintendent uh, in January of 2012, she served in numerous capacities. Uh, Miss Weatherall Neal holds several degrees, and um, she has been married for 35 years and has two children and two grandchildren. So everyone um, help join me in welcoming Miss Teresa Weatherall Neal. Thank you, Kyron, for that introduction. I'm going to move this mic a bit as well. What an honor it is tonight to be here with you. Um, I did not have the opportunity to participate in the Outward Bound program, but I was just telling some of the students that everyone that I know that attended this program coming through the years graduated from college and was very successful. So what a blessing it is for you all to participate. Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross is actually my boss, one of my bosses, for those of you that don't, don't know that. Um, but he really is more than a boss. He is an advocate for children. It is uh, very sad for me to um, know that he is leaving the Upward Bound program. I know that um, in his next position, he will work equally as hard but for the students in this room, I want you to know, I have nine bosses. Every statement that he makes, every decision that he makes, it really is about children. And you rarely find that. It's about all of you. He's in the schools. He knows what's going on. He knows the issues. And when you share something with Mr. Ross, he brings it back to the table or he brings it directly to me. That is really, really important for students to have a voice. It's important to me. It's important to Mr. Ross. But to have someone at the table that's making decisions and voting on your behalf is um, something that doesn't happen every day. So I want to thank you, Mr. Ross, truly for all that you've done. And the college is really blessed to have Mr. Ross in the next capacity as well, because I'm sure he'll fight just as hard. He will continue to be the voice for you because he is on the board for the Grand Rapids Public Schools. So even though he may not be um, over the Upward Bound program, he will continue to speak on your behalf. I want to thank the teachers in the room, especially those Grand Rapids Public Schools teachers. The Upward Bound program would not be successful without all of you. So I appreciate you. I also appreciate the parents in the room for you to be here tonight. That means a lot. It really is a sacrifice for parents to do the right thing for their children, but it doesn't go unnoticed. We recognize that without you, we can't do this work. And then to the students, my students, I was extremely disappointed to hear that all of you will not be attending the trip. I know that Mr. Ross wanted that to happen. Next year, I expect all of you to attend. 
that's really important that you go with your classmates, especially after being in the program all summer. So I want you to know that next year I want you to strive for that. As you celebrate tonight on your accomplish, accomplishments for the last four or five weeks, that's a lot of work. Think about this day in history. President Barack Obama just said today that we are all responsible for everything that happens. Mr. Ross, I know, has shared with you the importance of collective responsibility, and I just want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about responsibility. As you think about your future, our future, the future of this program and of the school districts, not just Grand Rapids Public Schools, but other districts. I want you to know that you have a responsibility to do the right thing. And that includes being responsible for you as a person, your classmates, this community. And for those of you that are getting close to 18 years old, you have a collective responsibility to vote, to know the issues, and to study. In this place and time today, this space right now, you have been blessed to be here. During the next 10, 15, 20 years, and, and you probably think that's a long time away, it isn't. It will be here before you know it. I want you to work with people in this community, wherever you decide to go, but come back to Grand Rapids. You owe something to these kids here in the Grand Rapids area. I want you to seek out the truth, seek out knowledge, ask the questions. That's what being responsible is really all about, asking questions, finding the truth, and then taking responsibility for whatever it is that you know and believe. There will be times when you don't have all the answers. We can't give you all the answers. What we can do is equip you with the knowledge to ask the questions, be where you're supposed to be, do what you're supposed to be doing, and be responsible and make those hard calls, being able to walk away when you know that you're not doing the right thing. There are many young people that are out there right now making decisions that are not being responsible. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to take the knowledge, the time that you've had here as you plan for the future, plan for next year, the school year. We're four weeks away from school starting. That's a good thing, don't say all. <laughs> Orientation is coming. You need to be the leaders. You, you have had all summer to learn about what it takes to be a winner. And I want you to do that when you go back to school, to be responsible. And don't let Mr. Ross down. He's worked hard in this program. You owe it to him to do the right thing, to be the leader. So when he comes to our school to visit, you need to act responsible. Show him what you've learned and what you're willing to do. And help the other young people to do the same thing. I have nine brothers and sisters and we were all responsible for each other. We had to help each other get through college and we all made it. And that's what I want you to think about, being a member of this family, the Upward Bound family. Help those young folks in your class, in your school. Show them what it is to be a responsible young adult. I want to thank you for allowing me to come and celebrate with you tonight. I am very proud of all the work that you've done. Amazing, the work that I was able to see in the other room. You can do it. We believe that you can do it, and we want you to be successful. And the only way to do that is for you to be responsible as you move forward. Again, enjoy this celebration tonight, and now I'm going to have cake. Thanks. <laughs> Mm.
now I would like to have Mrs. Gillish return to the podium to present the Special Recognition Awards to those students who achieved a 3.5 GPA or higher for the summer program, as well as the award for program valedictorian. Okay, so um, the biggest part of our program is obviously the academic portion and really pushing our students to grow academically and strengthen their skills um, to prepare them for the following school year. So we um, give them each four classes. They have um, an English class, a math class, uh, either a foreign language class, um, the seniors get ACT prep, um, the we also added in this, this year a foundations course to just strengthen some of those core math uh, skill sets. So they work really hard all day. They actually go from about 8 a.m. until 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, nonstop, um, working on their academic skills. Okay, um, so these students that I'm gonna recognize now uh, have earned a 3.5 cumulative grade point average. We take all of the weeks and average them out. So uh, we'd like to recognize these special students. This really is a big deal uh, because we intentionally make it hard. We intentionally push them to prepare them for their post-secondary um, education. Excuse me, all right. So the first student we're gonna recognize is our uh, rising 10th grader, Christopher Hasty. <laughs> And go ahead and come on up uh, when I call your name. I didn't say that. Um, Sharnice Legrone. Uh, Dong Nguyen. AKA Johnny. Miss Mandy Murphy. Timothy Pachardo. Guadalupe Rodriguez. <laughs> Alan Scott. Jeremiah St. Clair. Tishon Suggs, Jr. <laughs> Miss Alasia Tardy. <laughs> it's gonna take her a second to get up here. Oh, you want it delivered? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she had an injury this, this summer, so. Oh. <laughs> Triandra Thomas. <laughs> Where's Tree? <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Oh, you're going to stand up here, too? year it's pretty competitive for a valedictorian um, we usually have a very small margin of separation and it makes it really difficult on us because we can't tell who's going to win and we have to have these awards made so we are literally at the last minute scrambling running down giving them the name there the people that that make our plaques are really great because they allow us to do that but the kids worked really hard especially these two um, we had two students they were, one earned a uh, 3.95 and one earned a 3.93 for their cumulative grade point averages. So it was really, 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 really uncomfortably close. We couldn't tell um, until the last minute. And I think that both students deserve to be recognized. It's huge, it's a huge deal um, to earn that. And uh, I'm really happy and proud to announce that uh, Mandy Murphy has earned valedictorian this year. <laughs> I'd also like
like uh, to recognize Christopher Hasey was that student that uh, was very, very close to Ernie Valedictorian, and he's a rising 10th grader, so that's a huge deal. So we can recognize Christopher also. You may be seated, thank you. <laughs> um, at this time, I'd like to call Kyron to the podium, please. Thank you. All right, so um, at this time, I would like to ask all the teachers to come forward and present this year's class awards for most outstanding and most approved in uh, math, science, English, and Spanish. Good evening. Um, as a teacher, I actually despise public speaking, but I'm also a very good preparer, so that's why I have these notes with me. I'm going to start off um, by giving out my most improved award. My award for most improved student goes to someone who has matured socially and academically over the course of the summer. During the first few weeks, the student was constantly distracted. Instead of uh, receiving questions about how to find the volume of a triangular prism, I was asked things like, Mr. X, what's your first name? How old are you? And my personal favorite, do you complain about us to your wife? <laughs> However, by week four, I had noticed a significant change in the student's attitude. She was engaged, asking meaningful questions, and was eager to help others. She also developed one of my favorite juice cans at our class project. As a teacher, I firmly believe the more effort a student puts in, the more they can and will learn. This student put in the effort, improved her grades, and as a result has been selected as my most improved student. I feel extremely proud to present this award to Deanna Garrett. Now for my most outstanding. I had the pleasure of working with many talented young men and women this summer, which made choosing one for most outstanding very difficult. Nevertheless, this student was able to separate himself from the others. He re received an A every week in both geometry and foundations. I thought he was sick or something in week three when he only scored a 93%. This student is hardworking, respectful, humble, and a math perfectionist all of which are terrific habits for a young man to possess. And don't let his quiet demeanor fool you. After all, for our class project, he named the juice can he developed Beast Juice. With that being said, it is with great honor that I present my award for most outstanding student to Guadalupe Rodriguez. Hi, I'm Rob Feinweaver Meiskins. I typically just go by Mr. Rob, and um, I teach uh, physics, and I taught a couple foundation classes this summer, and I've done this for a number of years, and really the benefit of that is, is getting to know students quite a bit better. Um, I was able to tutor this year uh, in the schools, and um, that was just a fantastic opportunity to get to know students personally and, and uh, be able to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, which is really uh, my preference. Um, so, uh, my most improved student, uh, Mr. Ross already mentioned that, that primarily what's happening during this time in Upper Bound is this development, this growth that happens in students. Um, and although I think it's um, definitely valid to choose a most improved based on uh, their academic performance from the beginning to the end, I think uh, this year I was just really struck um, by the 
by the personal growth of this student. I think uh, people involved in Upper Bound recognize this as well. Um, just this uh, amazing transformation from past years to this year um, and in which he became uh, a student which uh, was looking to, to work hard and uh, despite um, problems that he encountered, uh, looked to work through those rather than giving up. Um, just did a phenomenal job in my classes. Uh, and so my most improved student is Mr. Ian Spaulding. that he made a conscious decision to make this improvement in his own life is, is amazing. Um, in, uh, in science in general, and I think this is probably applicable to most of, uh, of the disciplines, but in science there's um, a real need for people who have uh, creativity. Um, the, the foundation of science is curiosity for the most part, and the need to, to discover how things work and um, to learn new things. And uh, my most outstanding science student this year um, has always displayed to me um, uh, a real uh, curiosity in learning, a voraciousness in wanting to know how things work um, to the point that, that uh, he makes it seem really easy from time to time. Um, he uh, shared the best grade in my class through four weeks. Uh, um, and more than that, I think he just displayed to me uh, this real innate um, intelligence. Uh, and it's so with that, I would like to give my most outstanding student award to Mr. Daryl Kirkland. Well, hello, I'm Dr. Schmidt, and I taught, had the pleasure of teaching chemistry to this uh, fine assembly of 10th graders that uh, landed up with 12 of us there in the room. And uh, chemistry is so broad that it really is a challenge. What are you going to be able to carve out and hope to make uh, an impression, an important impression of some fundamentals that uh, we'll be able to carry them through as they uh, do chemistry and in their careers, if that's where they're going. And a lot of disciplines rely on chemistry as a foundation to be able to relate to the important things that are in their profession. So we picked uh, the periodic table, the collection of elements, the collection of the alphabet, so to speak, that makes up all of the things that make us up. And we took a journey through uh, starting with what's in the center of the, of the atom all the way out through what really binds things together. So we covered a lot of ground. And in, through that, uh, it requires a lot of mental gymnastics. And I remember the first day or the second day uh, with my most improved student saying that, you know, maybe the perception was changing here. And what I saw through the course of the, uh, of the uh, time that we had together was that that enthusiasm was building. And so starting from a pretty uh, timid level of uh, anticipation of what we were going to be getting into, I saw this really grow into, um, I think, a desire to learn more. And so my most improved student is uh, Dariana Peoples. Picked, uh, we did an element project in, as part of our uh, chemistry. I hope you saw it on the wall there, the science wall. And she picked one of the big ones. She picked uh, borium, which uh, has 107 protons in it and a whole bunch of other stuff. She picked the big one. All right. Um, also in chemistry, one of the big important things is, um, is taking notes so that we can capture what we've been talking about. And I mentioned to the students this is a special award for the best note taker in the class. And Christopher, if you would come up. He took the best set of notes as such.
For most outstanding, a very difficult decision because we had a lot of great, uh, have a lot of great students in this 10th grade class. But uh, what I saw was not only the uh, willingness in class, but then the willingness to carry it beyond and keep that helpfulness with the other students in the class, helping them with the, uh, the concepts, and then also doing a great job on their own personal part of uh, the, the classroom activities that we did. So my most outstanding student award is to Johnny Nguyen. <laughs> Maria Karic, and this summer I taught uh, calculus, pre-calculus, and a foundations three class. And this is my fifth summer with the upper bound. Um, I'm going to go straight to the awards, and I'm going to, uh, for my most improved award, um, I chose a student that had a rough start in the beginning, but towards the end of the summer, she ended up choosing one of the hardest projects we did, and she really excelled in it. And she ended up getting one of the highest scores on the final exam. It was a cumulative, cumulative high, high, uh, final exam. And this student is Jaylene Mateo. most outstanding student. Uh, I chose a student that um, every day was looking for something extra to do on top of the work that we did, always doing that those extra problems that I would assign as extra practice or uh, extra puzzles that they, that they did. Um, so this student uh, is Tishan Suggs. Short. Can everybody? See? Yeah. Okay. I'm Daphne. Uh, Daphne Viatoro, and I taught the Spanish um, section to try and help people get a little bit more pride in their language and realize the importance of being able to speak another language and to embrace their ability, their natural ability, what they have in their homes, and to to have that pride. Um, my most improved student actually the first few weeks didn't really show a lot of interest was actually kind of tired a lot in class and got a wonderful nickname because of that. Um, and by the end of the program was actually a lot more interested and participated quite a bit more. So my most improved student is actually La Dormilona, Vanessa. And my most outstanding student, basically from you know day one, was just ready to participate, always prepared, had great questions. And you've probably seen him up here a couple times because he is just an all-around excellent student. And I'd like to call Chris up. Ms. Cool could not be here this evening, so I'm, or she actually sent us um, what she would have said had she were had she been here. Ambra is going to um, give the awards on her behalf. <laughs> I'm gonna say it word for word. This is straight from Ms. Cool's pencil, mouth, computer. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with most improved. This individual struggled with my class last year, not only with the work, but with an overall attitude and putting forth effort. At the start of the summer, I was pleasantly surprised to find within the first week a marked improvement, effort, and attitude. This individual, this individual actively participated, initiated, leadership and openly acknowledged areas needed for improvement. 
The growth and maturity demonstrated by this student was a, pleasure, was a pleasure to witness throughout this summer. This year, most improved English student is Michael Knowles. My bad. All right, most outstanding. It is not my custom to award most outstanding to a first year student in the summer program. However, this, this individual has shown remarkable dedication, excellence, and perseverance in all, the, in all of the assignments given. This student has gone above and beyond with their test scores, proficiency, and daily assignments and general participation. This year's most outstanding English student is Timothy for Timothy. <laughs> small little change in our scripted program, not a huge deal, but uh, like I said, we have a lot of program alum here, so I want to maybe take a moment to acknowledge them before we get out of here, because also one of our other program alum uh, put a special request in early, so I want to make sure I squeeze that in. Um, he wanted to say some, some words this evening before, um, before we closed out, so before we continue with the awards and my forgetfulness, I decided to jump up and do that before I forget about it. But um, but my some of my babies from uh, 213, though, I want to point out, I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. And I mean, you know I was going to call you baby. I don't know why y'all smacking your lips. You know what the deal is. But um, but some of my babies, though, for real, um, I'm going to start with my girl, Be Rich. Go ahead and stand up, please, Be Rich. Um, Bridget's on her way to the uh, University of Toledo. Um, just graduated from uh, Creston, uh, part of a... Uh, the last graduating class of polar bears, for sure. And uh, next we have uh, Princess Guion. <laughs> Princess on her way to Fair State. And we have uh, Caleb Howard, another polar bear. <laughs> Caleb's on the way to Western Michigan. And who's next to you, Caleb? Oh, Shayla. Shayla, I couldn't see you, sweetie. Shayla Robinson. <laughs> on the way to, um, well, she's on the way to Jackson State University, but in all transparency, I'm trying to talk to making a better financial choice. Maybe y'all can help me with this. There's a community college down there that she finishes. Jackson State will pay for all of her Jackson State piece once she transfers, and her degree is going to still say Jackson State. But she's looking to borrow money to go to Jackson State. So y'all talk some sense into it for me before we go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, next to her, Kayla Jones, headed to Western Michigan as well. And uh, of course, my boy B. Chandler, uh, just graduated from Ottawa, headed to Ferris State. And uh, to his right, my boy Josh Pichardo. And Josh, you might as well make your way up here. Just make your way. Josh was the uh, younger brother of uh, Fernando Pichardo who was the, the engineering student at Uni University of Michigan, who wanted to offer some, some words tonight. I don't exactly know what he wanted to offer, but he texted me quite a few times a day, and I even put a pretty please on it. Um, and they know I'm a softie, so you know uh, he convinced me. But unfortunately, on his way back from Michigan to Grand Rapids, his car overheated, and he's unfortunately uh, stuck uh, midway uh, from there to here. Uh, so. So Josh is going to fill in and read the words that Fernando uh, sent him. But before we do that, we, we have some more um, uh, alum in the room. Uh, Alicia, Tardy, you think you guys saw her come up? She <laughs> just, uh, just finished her first year at Michigan State. And uh, her younger sister, Alasia, is uh, in the program now. And, oh. <laughs> and uh, two more in the room, uh, Tania Bradshaw. And she's not going to stand up. But she's representing her college on the front there. And you know I can't say it. Catawba. Catawba College in Mississippi. And I always butcher it. Oh, Itawan. But see there, I still butcher it. My bad. But she's, uh, she's from the SIP, so she's kind of going back to her roots a little bit and take herself to the next level. And there's actually some, some beautiful irony in that, though, really. Um, and one more, um, uh, Sandra Rodriguez. 
uh, who, who just finished her first year at Grand Valley, and she's the uh, oldest sibling of uh, Guadalupe, the maker of uh, Beast Juice. Um, <laughs> So, um, so anyway, but with that, though, I'm going to let uh, uh, Joshua read the words that uh, his older brother, Fernando, sent us. And then, Manny, you can continue on from there, please. Thank you for your flexibility. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? All right, that's good. I'm just going to go ahead and read this. If I look down at my phone, sorry for that. I try to read as much of it as I could. Okay. Family, the one thing we all have, whether it's parents relatives, siblings, or friends, everyone has someone in their life that they consider family. Throughout high school, I was blessed with two families, my family at home and my family at Upper Bound. My family at home was always my support. My, and my family at Upper Bound has always been my support. Upper Bound was the program that pushed me and made me go beyond my limits. If it wasn't for combination of both, I don't think I'd be here where I was today. I'm pretty sure Upper Bound is the same way for many of you. It tends to have that effect on people. Many of you don't seem to realize what Upper Bound has done for us now. How it's affected us in our lives, but if you take time to understand and appreciate what the program has done for us all, we end up seeing it in a whole new way. I, for example, was sure to go to Grand Rapids Community College for two years and then go to Grand Valley State for the last two years. Upper Bound opened opportunities and showed me the things I can do if I just work for it. I always say, if you want something bad enough, you have to go beyond your limits to make it happen. And Upper Bound has proved that to me every single time. That's why when I finished the summer program my senior year, I really felt like it was over. Just like many of my youth seniors who have been in the program since the beginning of freshman year. It felt like, it felt really bad because even though I had my senior year of high school left to finish, this moment right here, three years ago, and on the way back from our end of the year summer trip, it really felt like I was letting go. That's really why I wanted to speak to you all today. Because just like parents, the program has to let go of their children eventually. The sad thing is, all of you have, have to feel it, not just the seniors, but they will feel the difference much more than the rest of you. But listen to me very carefully when I say this. We all take different paths in life, but no matter where we go, we all take a little part of this program with us. And sacrifices and hard work and all the sacrifices and hard work the Upper Bound family has made and every day is the greatest tool I have ever accounted to help me make the biggest choices in life. And I want you all to remember that just because our family won't be in the exact mo same moment again doesn't mean it can't come with us on our travels. The summer program may be no more than a piece, than a piece of it and go on through life holding that piece. Knowing that you have something to do here on this earth Cue to all those choices and sacrifices have made you due to this program. My fellow Upper Bound family, the truth is, you don't know what, what is going to happen tomorrow. Life is, a, life is a crazy ride and nothing is guaranteed. But a life spent making its mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a little time spent nothing. Good luck with everything and remember what you got on your back. Thank you. I would like to call up the TCs, Ms. Kaddish, Mr. Chris, Mr. King, and Ms. Jada, to the podium to present the True Spirit of Upper Bound Award. Yeah, you do that. 
Okay. As you can see, this is kind of how some of our meetings went. We <laughs> chopped it up a little before and then made the decision as a team. So, um, uh, and, and talking about the true spirit of uh, Upper Bound, uh, uh, this person who uh, is going to be receiving the award um, has a quiet strength about himself. Um, and it was something that I noticed from day one. Uh, and, and seeing that, a lot of the things that he did uh, stood out in his actions more so than the words that he spoke. Um, and for lack of better terms, the word that he really didn't speak too much of. So um, some of the things that I seen out of him was, uh, for example, we, we did 5.45 and the 5 a.m. runs in the morning. And uh, this person would never put his name on the list, but he'd show up. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, y'all leaving me. And I'm like, well, I didn't know you was on the list. So um, those are things that stood out about him because it showed uh, that the action and the willingness that he uh, wanted to, 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 to put in to, to show that uh, the hard work that he was, he was doing for us. Um, another thing that stood out was um, he's very multi-talented and, multi and did a good job being a multitasker. And a lot of times you, couldn't even, you didn't even notice the work that he was doing behind the scenes. But... Um, it all stood out and it kind of showed in the end here uh, at Upper Bound. So uh, as a first year TC, he kind of showed me um, that uh, his willingness and dedication to the program has uh, stood out to all TCs and all of the staff um, over the course of the last few years. So um, we were great, greatly appreciative of him and uh, we uh, thank him for his hard work and dedication to the program. I'm not going to say his name yet. We're going to kind of wait and do a drum roll on that one. Um, this is my third year as a um, TC here. I wasn't here last year, so it's kind of different in um, meeting new students and stuff. But um, the student that we chose to have the TC award is um, Marcus. Thomas, um, I had <laughs> I had Marcus as a, when he was a rising sophomore. Um, he has a long, he came a long way. Um, he was one of my favorites. Um, he still is. Um, he definitely shows um, TC. He showed us what he can do as a student. I definitely think he stands out. Um, he shows everybody what he's supposed to be doing and implies a great student for Upper Bound. Um, he's helpful at all times when you ask him um, where we need from him. He's always there. Um, but um, that's Marcus. now like to present the Students Award, which is an award um, that is voted on by the students for the most outstanding all-around student of the summer. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. <laughs> and the winner is Alon Scott. Alon Scott. <laughs> Shout out to you. Got the juice. <laughs> We would now like to call to the podium Miss Jada and Mr. Granderson. But before they speak, there's one more thing that's not on the agenda that somebody doesn't know about. Yes. Man is going to tell you about it. <laughs> so. We would like to show our appreciation to someone who's very important to all of us. And Mr. Ross, we got you a little gift to remind you of us and to thank you for all the hard work you put into us and to this program. 
to make us better students and people. So thank you. get to talk I didn't get to talk about Marcus so um, first of all I just want to say thank you for everybody for coming um, my dream has always been to be a TC I was in upper bound uh, four years and I, um, I don't know if I'll even be here without upper bound so but mr. Ross he, um, when I was start he came in my um, sophomore year in high school I went to Ottawa Hills and First time I met Mr. Ross, he had pizza. I like pizza, he had pizza. I'm like, cool. <laughs> but um, I, I didn't know that he was gonna be um, pretty much a father figure to me. Um, I'm gonna try not to break down, y'all. Um, Mr. Ross has helped me and he continues to help me. Um, even through now, my father, he, um, I don't want to say he don't really care about my education, but even this week, while you know you students are in school, Mr. Ross still helps me. And that's what I was trying to tell you guys, you know, when he told us the news, like he's not going to leave you high and dry because this man just dropped off some financial aid information for me that I probably want to be in school right now because of him. Every year he helps me with this. And um, even when I was in the program, he pushed me to always be the leader. He always pushed me to... Because just to, let me tell y'all something about me, I had a bad attitude problem and a lot of people couldn't get through to me. And Mr. Ross was one of those people, like even Ms. Gillis, she got the wrath of me and it, it wasn't always pretty. But Mr. Ross, you know, every, since he's been here, I always had a high leadership role and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. And he's just like, well, why not, Jay Money? Like, you could, you could do it. Like, he, um... Uh, he, he put me through the program, and he put my little cousins through the program, and he, uh, I mean, that he was consistent. He didn't show one person more love than the other one. If you really wanted to be here, he did it. He helped you. If you really wanted something done, he made sure you got it, even if it was like if you needed a bus ticket to a meal, to needing a ride, he had your back. And I know for a fact that Mr. Ross, even though he's gone to another position, I know that he loves us. And um, I was just telling the student the other day that part of our basic 12 is rational decision making. And making the decision to leave upper bound, I know it wasn't easy for him, but I know that he had to debate back and forth, but we can't be selfish, y'all. We, we got to share him. He did what he had to do here. He got us here, he got us through. We got our seniors about to graduate. We got seniors here that graduated. <laughs> Mr. Ross has walked five senior classes out. All of them went to college right away. Still there. And so I just want to say thank you to Mr. Ross for always being there for me and continue to be here for me. I mean, without you, I, I truly just don't know where I would be. I probably wouldn't be in school. I wouldn't be trying. I'd probably just be working in the factory. And you showed me so much more to the factory work. And I want to say thank you for that. For real, Jada? For real? <laughs> Okie dokie. <clears throat> I got gum on my arm. <laughs> I got to do something for attention because Jada tripping. All right, my name is Rufus Granderson, and um, I have a motivational speaking uh, venture that I call Project Climb. And for the past few years, Mr. Ross has asked me to come out and 
do my little creative activities I do with the kids and blah, 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 this, 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 and that. And, you know, so, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, and it's, you know, as long as you got my money, I'm good. You know, I show up. <laughs> I'm a man of business, you know what I'm saying? And um, when you get there, you know, it's a, the business is all behind the scenes. It's a family, truthfully. And I was asked to say a couple of words about them, and me and Ms. Gillis have been talking for a week or so, a couple <laughs> weeks. And so I just said, oh, you know, because I'm about my business, I said, Ms. Gillis, go ahead and send me some information if I can have it, and I'll go over some things and get everything all ready and nice, how I do stuff and everything. Oh, yeah, Rufus, I'm going to get it right to you. <laughs> yup. <laughs> She got it to me just about 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> this is right, Liz? <laughs> Never truly gets recognized for all you. Okay, whatever. Listen, he's leaving, right? And this year, he's kind of like cut me back. Because normally, I'm in front of the kids all the time talking and get my stuff ready. So this year, he's been putting me on the back. I'm like, man, hold on, man. So he said, next Thursday is you. I'm going to let the kids know everything. But I'm leaving because he ain't told them and stuff. So I said, yeah, you should tell them ahead of time. And that's good. And I'll come in. I'll clean it all up. I'm ready. So I'm at home. I'm in the mirror. I'm ready. I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. So I come into the... The dorm last night, you know, I know it all didn't die down from earlier. And I come in, boys is running upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Kids is crying. <laughs> no. I walk into a war zone. And I'm sitting here like, oh, he didn't got me again. <laughs> and it's funny because Jada, him and Jada is about the same. Because Jada is supposed to be calming kids down. Kids are going, uh, Jada's going, oh. <laughs> I just go upstairs. I had no business. I go upstairs. I talk to the fellas because the fellas at level, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to do it. So I do my thing. I go right upstairs. I'm like, yo, this is, this is, this is. I spit it to him, didn't I? And I did good, didn't I? Yep. So I come downstairs. I'm just ready. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm built for this. Right? You know, he been holding me back. This is why, I, this is what I do. Right? So I'm getting it going. I'm talking about some stuff and blah, blah, blah. See, Project Climb, I try to teach the kids about words and images. They really don't mean anything unless they mean something. Words represent um, meaning. And meaning represents intention. Okay? So you got perceived value and actual value. So, for example, you can have a person that says, he's smart because you just read his grades, but in life he fails. He's not really that smart. So anyway, I did my thing with them boys. We come downstairs, I'm ready, and I start just talking to everybody. I'm like, yo, y'all, we got to just do this, and we do this. I spin some stuff, it's hot. He jumps right in. I got to say a couple of things. <laughs> and I was flowing. Tell the kids, what I was getting it in, what not. Y'all was like, man, we should be hearing them all year. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, this is some good stuff. I should be, I'm like, Marcus, record this. <laughs> he jumped right in. I got to say a couple of things. And he was going good. He's like, okay, and I just want y'all to know how much I care. And then I seen something I never saw before. He starts, I'm like, this man gone, he crazy. Him and Jada is now the worst ones crying in the whole room. <laughs> so anyway, back to this old stupid list. It says, never truly gets recognized for all that he does for the program. Ability to connect with students, selflessness, took UB program to a family Pushes outside of comfort zone, passion for what he does, drats. Again, in Project Climb, I teach about words. And words represent a meaning. But meaning always reflects intentions. So you can have something that, you know, you can have the end result. That could be the right answer, but it doesn't reflect intentions. These words about Mr. Ross honestly represents his intentions for everybody 
he has met in this program. Every thought, every talk, every moment he spent with professionals, with students, his intentions was for your betterment. And I'm proud to present to you Mr. Raynard Ross, a man of great standards of character and intentions. Thank you. Not ever speechless like in my entire life. Um, wow. I guess to know that people kind of care about you and respect you so much. I mean, you know, all of us that do good things on our own levels, we don't obviously think about that we're doing good things to that level. So um, I don't know. I guess I'm going to actually get it moving to back to some student stuff, which I'm comfortable with, you know, um, really. Um, so, yeah. All of our awards, um, I think we're um, all set with them. Do have uh, just uh, a few personal choices that kind of come under the director's award category. Uh, it was extremely tough to, to do that this year. Uh, really, to be honest, what I wanted to do is just take all those boys out of the class of 2016 uh, what we call the freshman boys, but they're technically rising sophomores. That particular group of guys, and actually guys, um, if you all would stand up for me, just those boys in 2016, please. Just stand up for me real quick. Okay. Now you guys stay standing for a minute, though. Stay standing for a minute. Um, you've seen each one of those guys make their way to this um, podium this evening. And... One thing about the upper bound summer is really stressful, arduous, frustrating, and it usually takes a student a uh, summer to understand the, the intensity of it. But these five boys here came in with just uh, flying colors, um, amazing. And I'll let y'all sit. I won't make you stand all the time. But, but uh, j just amazing. Um, you know, we took a trip this year to Central Michigan and spent the night with upper bound program. Uh, from the city of Detroit that's based in, um, that operates out of Central Michigan. And I, and they probably thought I was joking, but I went in there, you know, with my little competitive spirit, um, talking junk to that director. Like, well, you know, I, I got these five boys, I got these class 16 boys, grab any five boys you want, we'll uh, get these brain games out and see what y'all got. Cause I'm telling you, you can't see these guys I got. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, really um, having a good time with that. And, I think uh, she kind of, first she talked about it, then she kind of backed off and couldn't get it going. But um, when we closed out this, this, this transition piece yesterday, I called all of our, the, the what I'm going to call the men of Upper Bound. Uh, we had a conversation first, and one thing that I kind of mentioned to them was this class of 2016 boys being the, the beast that they are. That's why it's ironic that Lupe called this stuff beast juice, um, because again, these guys are beasts. Um, well, actually, both Timothy and Chris um, had a 3.93. So both of them were really threatened to be the valedictorian for the summer, and that's unheard of in the upper bound summer um, for first-year students to, to kind of rise like that. And, and Tishon had that hunger uh, that, that they talked about at an early age to always want to know more. <sighs> Please don't ever let that go, really. I mean, that's, that's something that can't be taught, seriously. Um, and I, technically, you know, the 2016 with his cousin Giante right next to him, um, exactly the same way, though. But I said technically, you're not a 16, but, you know, first-year student. But anyway, um, so anyway, I digress, though. I came up here to talk about um, the director's award. And I only mention those boys because collectively, I really would just wanted to honor them. But this their first year, so we do got to, they do got to pay some other dues, though. So I kind of push them to the side. But, um... But in all seriousness, though, we got a couple things. One, a personal growth award. As you know, Upper Bound is uh, pretty much a four-year commitment. We make a commitment to them. They make a commitment to us to stay together through our high school and, as you can see, even beyond. And um, so personal growth is observations that I've seen from when we first brought a, the student into the program and to where they are now, and I don't even think they really understand where they may be headed. Um, you know, and, and, and when we talk about principles of upper bound, we have uh, 12 basic expectations that not everyone's expected to 
live all the time, but we're expected to push people to show integrity, diligence, respect, positive communication, perseverance, discipline, leadership, cleanliness and order, confidence, humility, responsibility, and at the end of the day, rational decision making, just to make good choices for the moment and understand what you do at this moment impacts what happens at the next. So just growth over the years, I gotta bring uh, my boy up here, Michael Knowles Jr. Michael's a, a, a true leader in Upper Bound. Um, earlier, when I mentioned um, passion plus persistence turns pain into progress, some of you probably thought my grandfather said that. <laughs> but I got that from Michael Knowles. Um, so anyway. <laughs> but um, two final pieces tonight, um, a director's war, and I will admit um, I kind of cheated since I knew it was my last summer. I decided I was going to pick two because it came down to a couple people that I really couldn't, um, really couldn't uh, make a decision between. So I chose one male and one female. Um, and I guess I'm going to start with the female. And I know she's going to be kind of super surprised. But this one of those people, I'm a people watcher. And I just watch people, how they go about doing what they do. And I know none of us are perfect, but this person, showed these principles of uh, diligence, um, you know, respect, perseverance, discipline, uh, humility, a real quiet strength about her, uh, responsibility, being very responsible, and just really always making good choices. Um, I almost had to buy her off to get her to participate in the summer piece uh, this summer. Um, but I guess with no further ado, I'm going to bring uh, Ms. Genesis Garcia up here. But um, I mentioned uh, Genesis in particular. Um, Genesis actually is a rising senior. She didn't start our program until the beginning of last school year, her 11th grade year. And um, I, I guess I'll be candid. She's um, a borderline underachiever. Um, and I say that to say that I don't really know if she's yet recognized the greatness within her. Um, but I saw that this summer, particularly when I know she didn't really come into the summer enthusiastically, didn't necessarily really want to be there, but once she made the commitment to do it, she went ahead, full steam ahead, no complaints, um, you know, and really just quietly went about her business of being productive, being solid, and getting the most out of it, and on top of that, left every day after class to go to work, and I always came back to the dorm. And there was never any question about you know, um, to be honest, most teenagers, I wouldn't be letting them leave every day and come back and all. I'm like, wait a minute, no, no, no. But, um, but the level of responsibility in which she did that, you know, always came back at the same time. You know, just, um, just really, just, uh, I really can't, can't, can't say much about it other than um, I was just uh, floored at, uh, at the maturity in which she went about uh, handling her business. And close out this senior year strong, please, really. Um, And the last piece, and we'll be all done for the evening, with the exception of parents. You can get a, a itinerary for the trip uh, for your family uh, from, from Amber here before we get out. Fortunately, the parking gate is up, so we don't need any parking tickets. Uh, we just need uh, you guys to get the information about the trip so you know what's going on. We are leaving from Sneedon Hall, where our office is at the Voss campus, at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, Saturday night, however you want to look at it. Um, and the reason we're leaving at that time, because there's actually happened to be a festival going on in, in Nashville that we decided we'd go ahead and get there early enough to get to our hotel, get cleaned up, and get out and en enjoy some of the uh, different things of the city that we wouldn't uh, be able to take advantage of otherwise. So, so, um, so anyway, but if you want, I'll make sure I'm there at 1.15, because it's probably better for you to stay up a little later than to try to stay up all the way to 2 o'clock. So I'll get there at 1.15 if you want to drop them at that, at that time. Maybe that'll be a little helpful for you. So, um, but the last award though, tonight, um, 
uh, someone dear to my heart, someone else who um, integrity, positive communication, always speaks positively to other people, who's, a real, who's become a real leader and has begun to show a lot of confidence. Um, prior to that, this young man was very humble, um, but at the same time, I said there was a bit of insecurity there, which we all have. But he's begun to understand that he's coming into his own as a young man. He's beginning to understand really what he's capable of. And uh, once that light really clicks all the way on, uh, everybody just better watch out in all seriousness, though. Uh, he's amazing, very responsible. Uh, his peers look to him um, as a leader. And I'm just going to call up uh, Jeremiah St. Clair. I made it through that without any uh, uh, obvious tears, other than the, the secret ones I had when Jada was talking, of course. Um, it pretty much wraps it up for us tonight. I want to thank uh, Superintendent Neal for taking a little time. We don't usually go this long, but obviously uh, just kind of some extenuating circumstances here. Um, Trip-wise, guys, everybody knows what time it is. Uh, students, can, don't forget Alain, Mandy, Chris, Johnny, Jarlene, Jeremiah, Timothy, Tree, and Marcus, you guys got first dibs on the single seat since you had the highest uh, UB Bucks totals. Um, so um, other than that, I guess uh, let's get ready to uh, get going, get home, get packed, get some rest, and see you guys at Sneeton Hall tomorrow night. Uh, bus leaves at 2 now. Bus leaves at 2. So again, don't get there at 2 because... Uh, we're probably going to be ready to roll, so, you know. All right, thank you, everyone, for coming, though. Good night. <laughs>